Okay, I'm calling this the skater spin problem. And I've kind of drawn it here, but let me explain to you what's going on. So here you have an ice skater who's spinning. This is the body of the, of the skater, and the arms of the skater are stretched out like this, and the skater's spinning. And then the skater pulls the hands into the body and changes the configuration. And so the question is, uh, what's the change in angular velocity? So let's just go ahead and pick some things. Uh, so I've, of course, kind of uh, modeled my human as a cylinder and two balls, which is not realistic, but still useful. Uh, so I need some things here. Let's, let's say here's my cylinder human. And let's say this has a radius of, um, I'm just thinking out loud here, how about 0.1 meters, 0.1 meter, a length of, let's say 1.5 meters, uh, and a mass of, um, I'm going to go with 60 kilograms. And you can change these numbers to make yourself happy. And then I have the two hands, and these hands, we'll call this a distance uh, S. So S is going to be equal to 0.3 meters. And then um, mass, let's call this MB and M hand. Each hand has a mass of, oh, well, let's go with two kilograms. Okay. Oh, I need one more thing. The initial angular velocity, let's say they're spinning at, um, let's say they're spinning at one revolution per second. So one rev per second, and that's two pi radians per second. I just picked that again. Okay, so what's going on here? The first thing we need to think about is the system. And that's just going to be the skater. So if I have the skater as my system, I of course have a gravitational force pulling down and I have a normal force from the ice pushing up. However, those two forces uh, are the equal and opposite and they do not exert a torque on the system. So that means that uh, the change in angular momentum as a vector is zero. So momentum is conserved. And let's call this the, uh, the y direction. Then actually I can say L1y equals L2y. So these are the y components of the angular momentum, where the definition of angular momentum in the y direction is going to be uh, I omega where omega is also in the y direction, where i is the moment of inertia and omega is the angular velocity. So I have the angular velocity to begin with. I'm trying to solve for the final angular velocity. So the question is about this i. So what's this i? In general, i is the sum over i, m i r i squared. So it's a measure of how the mass is distributed about the axis of rotation. So clearly that changes, because here the masses are different distance than they are here. Uh, and in fact, we could write this. I could write the moment of inertia of the skater is going to be I cylinder plus 2 M hand S squared. So this is the moment of inertia of a cylinder, which I can look up and I'm going to tell you in just a second. Uh, and then each mass has a distance of S from the axis of rotation and a mass of M. So I have two of those. So this is like integrating over all the masses to get uh, all the masses in the cylinder and then this is adding on the hands. And so you notice here that this is going to change. Okay, So the cylinder doesn't change but those do change. So the moment of inertia of a cylinder it's just the same as a disk. So it's going to be 1 half m r squared. Well I'm defining the r to be the radius of the cylinder. Okay. So if we get that, then really what we're going to have is I1 omega 1 equals I2 omega 2. That's conservation of angular momentum. So if I want to find omega 2, I need to find, I know that one, I just need to find I1 and I2. So let's write down an expression for the two moments of inertia. Okay, so I'm going to say in position 1, I have uh, I is going to be one half m human r squared plus mass of the 
Wait, no, oh, I said body. I was about to say human hand. I did say body. Yeah. One uh, mass hand S squared. So just to be clear, it's 2MH S squared, but then there's a one half there, so that one half and the two cancel. And that's it. That's I1. I2 is, again, one half M body R squared, plus now these two things have a new distance of R. So it's going to be MH R squared. So I could really write this as, I don't have to, I could write this as one half M, could I write this? One half. Let's just leave it like that. Because I'm going to put these numbers in anyway. So now I can solve for omega 2. It's going to be uh, I1 omega 1 over I2. And I'm going to get numbers for these. I'm going to do that in Python. Okay, But that's my answer. Now, the next question is how much work does this person have to do in order to pull the arms in? Or do your arms just fling in themselves? Okay, uh, So I can say the system again is the skater. And there's no work done on the skater, so work equals zero equals the change in rotational kinetic energy plus the change in internal energy, where that's the amount of energy the person exerts themselves. So this is going to be the change in internal energy is going to be K rotational 1 minus K rotational 2. Because there is when I move to the other side I get negative. It's actually final minus initial but then I have a negative of that. And the rotational kinetic energy is going to be 1 half I1 omega 1 squared minus 1 half I2 omega 2 squared. And so here it's not clear that this is going to be a decrease in energy uh, because in this case I1 is going to be greater than I2 but omega2 is going to be greater than omega1. So the question is which one's going to win and I know the answer but you don't and that's fine. Uh, so now we're going to put this into Python as my calculator and I'm going to show you how to do that um, right here. Okay, so I got GlowScript here. Uh, you, you definitely want to make sure you use GlowScript, not just plain Python, because it has some things in there that are very physics oriented and are going to help you out a lot. Okay, so let's just put in my values that I have from my paper. So I had the radius is 0 0.1. And a reminder, uh, we don't use units. If you want to put the units, you have to put it as a comment. Uh, otherwise, Python will think it's a text instead of a number. I have the length, which I actually don't even need. I don't know why I put it in there. Uh, I have the mass of the body is 60 kilograms. Mass of the hand is 2 kilogram. And S is 0 0.3 meters. Uh, omega 1 is 2 times pi sec radians per second. OK, so now I'm just switching over here. Let's calculate uh, omega. Uh, the moment of inertia 1, I1, is going to be equal to, I'm just typing in my equation right here, 0. 0.5 times mass of the body times R squared. Remember that squared is uh, asterisk, asterisk, not hat um, in Python. I don't know why, so you can ask me about it, I don't know. And then we had mass of the hand times S squared. And then I2 is going to be, and you could print these if you want. I could do print I1 equals I1 and then run it. That's not a bad idea to do. Makes It's nice to print it in the middle part just to make sure things are working. Uh, I2 is going to be 0.5 times MB times R, and case does matter, you have to make it capital R, plus um, MH times R squared. Let's print that one too. Let's see what we get. And so it did go down, and that's good. Okay, and then we can print out omega 2. It's going to be equal to I1 times omega 1 divided by I2. Print final omega equals, and I'll put the units here, omega 2 radian per second. So they were going at 2 pi. Now they're going at, which is, you know, 6-ish. 
Now they're going at uh, 9.4 radians per second. So they did increase in speed, which is what we'd expect. We've seen this before. You know that sh that's how it should work. Now let's calculate the change in turn in internal energy, dE. And this I'm, again, just typing in my equation, uh, 0.5 times I1 times omega 1 squared. And see, here's the nice thing. I've already, I don't have to type in the expression for I1. I already have it up here. It's just a value. Okay, so that's kind of cool. Minus 0.5 times I2 times omega 2 squared. Change in internal energy. And that's in joules. And so it took 4.7 joules. That's not that much. Okay. Um, so that's how much energy it required the person to expend after eating their Wheaties or whatever they had for breakfast or whatever. Okay. There you go. I'll see you guys in the next one.